Welcome back to Bloomberg's Bottom Line. In a year when most funds suffered from mediocre performance, Parnassus Investments returned 25% to its investors thanks to a strategy based on creative thinking and finding companies with unusual services. Joining me now from San Francisco is Jerome Dodson, the CEO of Parnassus. Mr. Johnson, welcome to Bloomberg News. Always good to have you on, sir. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, even with the unemployment rate hovering near 10 percent and even with that jobless number causing the S&P 500 to drop to its lowest level of the year back in July, back in the summer, you believe that the bull market would in fact stay intact. Why? Primarily because the economy is going to recover. It always does. But it takes a much longer than people think. It's the hiring is slower, the housing is difficult. But the stock market is really a discounting mechanism, which means it looks forward. So back in July, I thought, you know, by the end of 2011, 18 months ahead, the economy would be doing much better. But that's when the stocks move. So we decided that now is the time to buy stocks. And we found a lot of bargains in that period. And, sir, we'll talk about those bargains in a second. But what positive fundamentals did you see which led you to tell people that this is cyclical? It's happened before it may in fact happen again and patience is the watchword really I just looked at history to see what's happened before the American economy is fundamentally very strong first we're having some difficulties now but I looked at the Federal Reserve they had kept interest rates low which meant that housing was very affordable even though it was difficult for many people to buy because of the unemployment but I knew if the economy kept growing, and it was growing at that point, not very uh, much, but it was growing enough so that at some point businesses would start hiring. And it's taken much longer, and that's been a drag on the economy. But at some point, businesses are they're doing better, and at some point they're going to have to hire people, and that should also help the housing market. So you don't foresee the possibility of a double-dip recession, even with this unemployment number as high as it is, as it is and even with this still uh, housing market still in some distress? No, I don't think there's going to be a double dip recession, partially because of our fiscal policy and partially because of what the Fed is doing with their monetary policy and the fact that the economy is growing. To hear bad economic news, and we've had our fair share this year, but it's another thing to hear what people on the ground are telling you. Is there a disconnect between what's being reported and what folks who are down and doing the nuts and bolts work are telling you? No, I think the media in general has been pretty accurate, whether it's Bloomberg TV or any of the others. I think it's, it's fairly accurate. Uh, there's some good news, there's some bad news, and you just have to look at the numbers and decide what are the most important ones. So you believe if investors can block out the noise, if they can tune out the noise, there are in fact some good deals out there to be had. What might they be? Well, um, the ones that have worked very well for us this year that helped our performance, one has been Finisar, and that's a telecommunications uh, company. It has somewhat unique characteristics in the sense it makes a product called a Rodem, and what the Rodem does, it enables the telecommunications provider to remotely configure um, their um, optical equipment. And this helps a lot so you don't have to actually walk out there and make the changes and so that's been very uh, helpful to us. Uh, another one that, excuse me, go ahead. I'm sorry, no, go ahead. You said there was another one that uh, caught your eye as well. Oh, the other one that I like is called Sienna, and it also is in telecommunications. They make optical networking equipment, and our view is that because a lot of the networks are starting to get thin, they're going to require more capital equipment. Because of that, I expect capital expenditures to increase at the telecommunications providers, all the, fo the phone companies, and that in turn should help uh, makers of this capital equipment like Sienna. Let me follow up on what Peter Cook was just telling us. This debate in Washington about the Bush era tax cuts, uh, do your investors have any thoughts on that? Are they telling you they might have any concerns or questions about it? No, I think everybody really wants to extend the tax cuts, especially for the people below $250,000. I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, perhaps later on in a couple of years after the economy recovers, you can talk about, you know, ending the tax cuts or having tax increases. But right now, I think it makes economic sense uh, not to increase taxes. Uh, Mr. Johnson, let's get back to the markets here. In a Bloomberg story, you said, quote, everyone was moaning and groaning this summer. At that time, <laughs> had you been able to divorce 
distance yourself from your emotions and buy stocks, it would have been great. Mm -hmm. And I understand what, when you're talking about other people's money, when you're talking about that equity, isn't it easier said than done? Yes, it is. I mean, we're all human beings that have uh, psychological concerns, you know, fear and, and so forth. But if you're able to say, okay, let's look at certain factors you're going to have and do it when things don't look good. So, for example, one stock we like uh, right now that would illustrate this, it's called Administaff, and the symbol is ASF. What they do is they do outsourcing of personnel services, things like payroll and health insurance. Now, it, two things move the stocks higher. One is interest rates, so the interest rates go higher, they would earn more money off their float. Also, if employment goes higher, they would uh, earn more money because more people would be employed and they'd have more uh, people to service. However, right now, interest rates are low and unemployment is not really growing. But at some point it will. When that happens, the stock is going to come back. So right now it's at a bargain level. So if you're able to divorce yourself from the current situation and look ahead maybe 6, 12, 18 months, usually it helps you in terms of being a better investor. So you remain bullish on 2011. Which companies are you buying and why? Well, the one I mentioned, of course, was Administaff. I'm still uh, buying that one. I think that's a very good uh, investment. Also, we're buying some uh, small technology companies. Um, we think financials should do better. It's so really across the board, but we try to focus on individual companies rather than the market as a whole or the economy as a whole. And usually, if you can divorce yourself from a lot of the economic news and focus on, is this a good company? Is it going to do well? Does it have a good return on equity? You're going to be uh, far ahead. Uh, can I ask you in our last minute a question about what's going on in Europe? What's going to be the impact of expansion of the Chinese and European manufacturing? Is that going to have an impact on Wall Street and also what's going on in places like Ireland and Greece? How is that going to affect your investing strategy? In terms of manufacturing over there or in terms of the financial situation uh, over there? Both. Well, certainly uh, you want to have both Europe and Asia uh, successful prospering so we can sell them goods and they come back because we are affected like that. Uh, fortunately, we haven't been affected as much by the financial crisis in Europe. That does concern me because those governments are spending far too much. They're having to cut back uh, and then having little people. So, yeah, it's definitely a concern and I'm hoping that things will get better. But right now, uh, it doesn't look too good and I'm just hoping that things will improve. Sir, could I ask you in our last 30 seconds, last night, Ben Bernanke on 60 Minutes, he said the economy is barely expanding at a sustainable pace. It's possible the Fed may expand bond purchases beyond that $600 billion that was announced. Any thoughts on that? Yes, I would welcome that. I really have a lot of confidence in Bernanke, and I think given how weak our recovery is in the European situation you pointed out, that uh, another um, quantitative easing or buying of bonds, which they call it, I think that would really help because I think we, uh, we're not out of the woods yet. We need the economy to get faster. We need employment to go up, and that would yeah. really help, in my opinion. Jerome Dodson of Parnassus Investments joining us from San Francisco. Sir, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much.